Trison. What is Trison? Well, for you shippers and especially non-shippers out there, it's basically the ship name between two of the best boys, or the only human boys, Troy and Benson, on Netflix's Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts. Kipo is a show which I like to describe as a hybrid between Avatar The Last Airbender, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and Planet of the Apes. It's an incredible show with loads of colorful, interesting characters and tons of world building over the course of the two seasons so far. You should definitely check it out if you haven't. Back to Troison. Benson, who is the brave and music-loving best friend of Kipo, meets Troy, a fellow male human at the end of season 1, who resides in a secret burrow under Las Vistas. As soon as their eyes first played on each other, Sparks flew, and they instantly developed crushes on the other person. More so for Benson, as he was looking a little bit obvious here. Troy, on the other hand, played it cool. What's so special about this moment is the fact that the show wasted no time in setting the foundation of their relationship. We, the viewers, are instantly able to recognize that they both fancy the other person in a romantic way. Hey, Benson! You right? Hi, I'm Benson! I mean, how can anyone not ship these two? Like, seriously. A lot of animated shows with queer representation don't usually introduce their LGBT characters in that manner. They usually like to drag things out and drop little hints here and there, and when they are ready to include them in a same-sex relationship, it tends to be very subtle in its execution, and it's up to us as viewers to decipher that these characters are actually in a relationship. Ahem, <clears throat> Korasami. Well, to be fair to Korasami, I more or less got the hint that they got together as a couple at the end, but I definitely needed that proper confirmation by the creators and writers, which actually happened. And also back in 2014, it was definitely more difficult to convince network executives to push for explicit LGBT representation compared to recent times. Speaking of recent times, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Shira and the Princesses of Power with their canon lesbian couple, Kachadora. The general vibe Kachadora gave off to me since season 1 rode a fine line between a complicated sisterly relationship and a romantic one. But that's because the show had this tendency to not be so clear-cut about certain things, which led me to question what their dynamic is actually supposed to be. Then season 5 came around and we got this. And all of my suspicions and doubts were cleared. They were absolutely gay. I don't know about you guys, but unless I see a kiss or a grand declaration of I love you to the other person, I don't consider characters to be romantically linked. It may sound silly to some of you, but I've been disappointed too many times in the past when it comes to characters in various shows where all signs point to them being gay and I was rooting for them so hard to come out or get together with another character. But the show just didn't deliver on what was seemingly promised or hinted to us by the end. So with Shira, both the I love you expression and the kiss were delivered, which means that all of that teasing and built up tension we had witnessed throughout all five seasons amounted to something worthwhile. The fans and shippers got what they wanted, and it was deserved. There was no queer baiting unlike some other franchise on Netflix. So tying this back to Kipo, I feel that Troison holds the same importance as Kashadora. In fact, I think Troison has already accomplished some of the things Kashadora did, which is 1. Being a relationship that is explicitly gay and canon. 2. A relationship that is properly built up without having to rush through things. I mean, look at them, bonding over flapjacks and setting up cute dates because of that. The only difference is that they're not endgame yet, but that could change when season 3 comes out. But having achieved what I've already mentioned just now is huge, and Kipo only has 20 episodes under its belt so far. In fact, Troison specifically only has 3 episodes of screen time if I'm not mistaken. I also have to make the distinction that unlike Katra and Adora, Troy and Benson are not exactly the most important characters in Kipo. 
but what they have going on for them is that they are arguably the second most featured couple on Kipo, being only behind Leo and Song. And that's mostly because Kipo, Wolf, and I guess Dave aren't partnered with anyone. This is a good thing because it gives couples like Choison plenty of room to breathe and become a bigger deal in the future seasons. By the way, I'm very excited for Season 3 to come out. First, the Dragon Prince getting renewed for Seasons 4 through 7, and now Kipo? Ugh, guys, I feel spoiled. However, this will be Kipo's last season. Let's just hope that they will make this last season count. But enough with the general stuff. I'll tell you guys the real reason why I'm ready for Troison to blossom into a Kashadora, and that's because this specific ship is a male-to-male -male pairing. Let's be real here. Generally, in comparison to female-to-female -female relationships in Western animation, same-sex male couples are much more underrepresented. And even if they are represented in the case of Sheriff Blups and Deputy Durland in Gravity Falls, it's pretty implicit and it's usually up to the writers to give us the confirmation. In Shira and the Princesses of Power, we do have Lance and George, who is obviously a canon gay couple because they are the dads of Bo, but they are pretty much background characters the entire time on the show. Again, pretty underrepresented. And no other queer character was done as dirty compared to Shiro on Voltron Legendary Defender. Come on now. Things started out well with the wink wink introduction of his boyfriend, Adam Curtis, in a Season 7 preview clip. Remember this clip that was shown in the San Diego Comic Con 2018 panel, which led to everybody in the audience and online to freak out about Shiro getting a boyfriend on the show? How important am I to you? Every drill. But as Season 7 was released, and fans binge-watched the entire season, all of our hopes and dreams were destroyed when Adam was blatantly killed off on screen after having such little screen time. It was effed up, and fans were quick to attack the writers and voice actors for delivering a classic example of bury your gaze. However, the backlash had gotten so crazy to the point that they were getting death threats, which I do not condone at all. In the effort to mend things over, they decided to give Shiro a last minute boyfriend, whose name I can't seem to remember. Oh yes, it's this guy. See, this really shows how rushed and random this pairing was. I couldn't even remember this dude's name. I think he only got like one or two lines on the show, and let's be real, that wedding scene and kiss on the season finale was the show's pathetic attempt to do damage control for the shit they pulled here in season 7. But again, all of those death threats the writers and voice actors got before this from certain rabid fans was absolutely ridiculous. I don't know about you guys, but I think society in general is less comfortable with seeing two guys kiss compared to two women. And maybe that's just due to things like the culture of toxic masculinity and the condition attached to the HIV pandemic, where gay and bisexual men were mostly blamed for it. Could that be the reason why representation of same-sex male couples in animation, especially children's animation, is so scarce till today? I mean, look at all of the backlash Arthur got last year for showcasing a gay wedding between Mr. Ratburn and Patrick. But on the same token, it's highly possible that their reaction would have also been negative if it featured a lesbian wedding. So with Choison, there's a lot of untapped potential to make this ship the most well-developed and well-executed same-sex male couple in the history of Western animation. Until recently, besides Choison, we did have Adam from The Hollow, who actually to me was a good representation for the LGBT community due to the fact that he doesn't fit a stereotypical personification of what a gay male should look like and act like, unlike what's been portrayed in a lot of live-action American TV shows and Family Guy. Although, after two seasons, Adam has yet to show any romantic interest in anyone. Yes, and I'm still including Kai in this, and I can't blame him. 
I mean, he has other things to worry about, like not being erased from existence. But still, I want my boy Adam to have cute coupley moments with somebody. That's not a lot to ask for, right? Well, guys, um, Netflix has officially cancelled The Hollow, and there goes our other opportunity to have good gay couple representation in the future. In terms of ongoing Western animated cartoons, there are such few male characters that serve the G in LGBT representation, but of course, why can't we have more? I hope animation studios will continue to be open to bringing in our developing properties that do justice to gay relationships because there's just so little out there. Heck, with Shira gone, who will now serve as the representation of lesbian relationships in Western animation? Okay, so I completely forgot that there was a confirmed lesbian couple recently on Disney Channel's Owl House where Amity is a lesbian and Luce is bisexual, and Amity has a crush on Luce. Kudos to you, Disney, but I'm still keeping my eye out on you for dropping the ball a few times in the past when it comes to LGBT representation. I recently watched two boy love anime, Given and Banana Fish. And I really think that Western animation needs to take a page or two out of these two animes because they really do their gay characters and pairings justice, I must say. Sure, each shows have their own set of problems, but generally speaking with their main gay pairings, Yu and Oyama with Mafuyu and Ash with Eiji, they're really well portrayed. They both have the right amount of buildup, and both couples are consistently portrayed in a positive light. Not to mention, all four of them are the main characters of their own shows. But of course, it's pretty much a given since the genre is boy love. By the way, I am still not over Ash's death. In fact, I still want to cry whenever I listen to the background music that was playing when Ash was bleeding peacefully to his death in the New York Public Library. I believe the song is called Liberty? Wait, hold up Peter, hold up. Why do you say that Ash and AG were done well when you know damn well that Ash died in the end? Isn't that an example of bury your gaze trope as well? Uh-uh, that's two totally different things. Unlike Adam and Voltron, Ash didn't die for no reason. Ash died because he cannot stand living a life where him being present in Eiji's life will consistently put his life at risk. After reading countless of blog posts and people's analysis of this final scene on Banana Fish, Ash probably had a chance to survive after getting stabbed by the mf -er, Lao, but instead of seeking medical help, he decided, you know what, I did all that I can, I stopped the mob boss, I solved the banana fish mystery, AG is flying back to Japan and he's probably going to be safe and sound there. So my time on this earth is done. Me living in this world would just rope AG in my own messed up world that is full of crime and gang wars. So that's the difference. It wasn't like a boom pow death, you see what I'm saying? Generally, I recognize that it is hard for Western animation to take pages out of Japanese animation due to how different the nature of these two categories are. American cartoons that are non-satire have historically been targeted at children, whereas a lot of anime, specifically anime genres like Boy Love and Yaoi, are aimed at adults. So there is room for anime showrunners to showcase LGBT romances much more explicitly, like way more. Hence, there could be a possibility that Troy and Benson aren't enough to satisfy my needs and wants. But if they can pull these characters off the same way DreamWorks did with Kashadora, which could be realistically done since Kipo is a DreamWorks property too, then I would be absolutely satisfied especially given the low bar Western animation has set for itself. We shall see though. Again, we have already been making so much progress when it comes to LGBT representation in the last decade, but let's just hope that these baby steps we are making become huge strides in the next decade of the 2020s. Again, this is just my opinion, and if you don't agree with me, that's fine. Just don't go crazy with the hate comments, okay? <laughs> but anywho, I would love to hear what y'all think about my discussion video. 
Do you agree that same-sex male couples are more stigmatized and hugely underrepresented than their female counterparts in Western animation? Also, are you excited for Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beast to come out on October 12th? Because I know I am. Comment down below on what your opinion is. And please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content just like this and I will chat with you all next time. Bye!